So, isolation's going well. I think it's Wednesday. Lost track of what day it is completely. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about projects and fun things that we can do to try and sort of fill some time because we've got a lot of time. We've got a lot of time in houses. So it's about trying to find things to do to, yeah, pass time. So today is an interesting one. Today is about a phenomenon called camera obscura, which let me give you a bit of background first and then I'm going to show you exactly what happens and then show you how to do it. it the little bit of background, a little bit of history, not, not too much, I promise. Camera Obscura has been around for decades, I think sort of mid 15th century. People were using it for painting and it, it led to the development of the camera as we know it. Essentially, the very simple principle is you have a hole, light comes in one side and then refracts out the other and projects the image onto the other side. And yeah, early 19th century was when they started using it to actually make cameras by projecting that image onto a light sensitive material. But what I really like about it is it projects an image of whatever's on one side of the hole to the other. I first noticed it, it it's a natural phenomenon that happens around us and chances are you've probably seen something similar, just never necessarily done it deliberately. So I noticed it, I lived in a flat in Glasgow that had blinds and I noticed that one one set of blinds was closed and another set of blinds it would project an image of the blinds onto the back wall which was a little bit odd and I just noticed there was a pattern but didn't quite understand it. I was then in a hotel in London, I think it was the Orange Tree with Emma. What we noticed when we woke up there was a tiny gap in the curtains and we could see some of what was outside in the square being projected onto the ceiling of the bedroom and it was very blurry, but you could clearly see buses going past or cars going past, various things. It was quite cool to be able to see, actually. And then we noticed that actually we had it in our room at home. The reason you tend to notice it more in bedrooms is simply because that's the place where often it's light outside, but it's dark inside before you open the curtains and be lying there and you can see these images projected. There is, I have been to the official Camera Obscura in Edinburgh. I'm gonna put a link down below. There's a list, I think there are about 20 Camera Obscuras across the world. I think there are about six or seven in the UK that you can actually go and visit and they're set up in amazing places to be able to see. But I'm gonna show you how to be able to make one in your home, which is, yeah, it's quite good fun. The only slightly odd thing is you do have to make it look like a uh, raving loony lives in your house for a little while because you have to black out one room of windows which is not the best look when we're in isolation but doesn't have to be for long I've been told by my wife I have as long as it takes me to make this video and then I have to take it down but I'm hoping that I might be able to make a more permanent version that is kind of removable because I do think it's quite a cool projection so essentially very simply the process is you black out the windows. I used cardboard boxes. We'd had a delivery, and so I used the cardboard off them and some duct tape to be able to seal it up. And then you cut a hole in the middle of one of the boxes. Make sure that the hole is not over a, do they call them mullions? I think they call them mullions, but the bit in the middle of the window. And then close off all the lights in the room, turn around, let your eyes get accustomed to the dark and you'll see the image projected in reverse. That's the one thing to remember. It is completely upside down. So the sky will be on the floor and the ground will be on the ceiling, which is the bit that takes most to wrap your head around. When you do it, you have to let your eyes get accustomed to dark. You're not gonna close the lights, close the door, turn off the lights and suddenly immediately see a bright, bright image. It does take a little while to get your eyes adapted to it, but you can take some quite cool pictures that essentially is the outside projected inside. So if you live somewhere with a beautiful view, try and pick the room that has the best view in the house to do this in, if possible. So obviously the better view outside, the better view you'll get projected into the inside. I'm also going to try a little bit of experiment. So this is something I'm gonna work on with you. Actually looking at how much difference the size of the hole makes, because obviously if we have a bigger hole, we'll let more light in, 
which should mean that it will be easier to see more quickly. But this is where it does all tie in with photography. So actually as an experiment for photography, this is all based on aperture, which is something that we use all the time. And the idea of the bigger the hole, the shallower the depth of field and the more blur. And this is the issue that the bigger the hole, you'll get a more blurry image. Tiny hole, it'll be very dark, but you'll get a much sharper image. So what I'm gonna do is show you my setup at the moment. Then I'm going to very briefly make a couple of different size holes and I'm gonna take some pictures so I can show you how it actually looks with the different size holes. So that's what I'm gonna go do now. So this is my future nursery. I have a cot. There was a Moses basket there, but I shoved it over there so it wasn't in the way of anything. And that's my not at all creepy window. Um, so the hole that I've cut in it, you can see right there. And if I do that, you should be able to see the outdoors. Oh, there's Emma in the garden. Um, so you can see the view outside. And then I've had to bring light in here now. If I turn this light off, I'm just gonna make sure the door's closed. Takes a while for the eye to get used to it. There you go, you can see the image being projected. So you can see at the moment, the image is pretty sharp, but if I focus up, so that's focused on the edge of the bookcase, but you can see that actually it's not super, super sharp. The hole that I've cut is not super sharp at the moment. And so this is where it's gonna be quite interesting to see whether cutting it more smoothly using different size holes may make a difference but yeah we should don't quite know if you can see Emma she would be somewhere over there but I can't see her at the moment but yeah so that's the basic principle of it so to add in my additional apertures I started off by tracing the shape of the aperture attachment mount thing that I made uh, and cutting out a space that it would fit over little tip don't use a knife against glass. I was lucky it didn't break, but if it had done, I think I would have been in trouble. Here you can see the differences that different size apertures make. So at 15 centimeters and 12 centimeters, it's still, even down to nine, it's still very blurry, but you can get a sense of the image. From about six down, it starts to become sharper and sharper. The problem with one centimeter is it's fantastically sharp, but it's very difficult to actually see anything. So I think that I've found that about a three centimeter diameter seems to be ideal for being able to actually see it easily, but also still be sharp enough. Six centimeters will work. It's also key to note that actually it works so much better on bright days. Here you can see where it was clouding over and the cloudier it gets, it just loses that contrast in the image. And it certainly always looks better on a bright, crisp day. So that's about it. And it's a fun little experiment to do. It's great if you've got some kids or you're a photographer and you just want to be able to experiment with the idea of aperture and sharpness and depth of field, or I guess you could use it. The original purpose of using it for artists was so that they could actually trace around the shapes that they were projecting to then be able to create artworks. You could create an inverted artwork of the view from your room inside your room if you wanted to, but have a go. Take some pictures. I'd love to see your pictures. I'm on Instagram. It's at little tipple, little underscore tipple. And tag me in them. I'd love to see your pictures. So please show me, let me see what you're creating with it. And otherwise, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to. There's a whole host of how to improve your photography videos, which I know some of them might be landscape based or portrait based and probably not going to get out and take a lot of pictures, but there might be some stuff in there that you might learn from. There's some camp fan videos on there as well, which might be nice to get a sense of the outdoors, even if you're stuck indoors. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.